you have to understand carefully. Because if you say, oh, he had married, he married, he married two women. But he's not, he can do, he's transcendental, and these rules don't apply to him. But we are not there. So does this make sense? I don't understand if... Uh, like, so basically, you know, the principle, obviously, the ultimate is to do a prem bhakti and you know, be in. So if you, um, like in, in your heart, the, the print, principal intention is, uh, you, you know, that spiritual platform, like... Mm -hmm. Like, Prema Bhakti is the roof. That's the top thing. Mm -hmm. But it's difficult to come to the roof, to build a house, if you don't have any, how do you call this, support and how do you call this, foundation. Yeah. If you don't have any foundations, it, it's impossible. And this is sometimes what uh, we feel we as devotees we want to achieve. We just want to build a roof without any foundations. And foundations means in traditional context it's Vanusha and Dharma. That's some morality, that's some ethics, that's some social system. And unfortunately we don't have this. We don't have this. We have many good aspects of uh, Christian background or whatever religiosity is there, but we don't have these foundations. So to think, and if you think about ISKCON in the, in the ISKCON's past, this was so much the example, trying to build a house, trying to build a roof without any foundations. And therefore if you study Prabhupada's teachings, uh, around 73, 74, he very much emphasized Varnashram Dharma, because Varnashram Dharma is foundation. And the famous Vanusha Dharma talks in Mayapur, where he talks with his disciples that uh, he wants to establish Vanusha Dharma, and then some of his disciples are saying, well, that's a lower thing, be a Vaishnavas. And then Prabhupada said, if they are Vaishnavas, why are they falling down? Vaishnava ultimately is something higher than a Brahmana. That's completely transcendental. But Vanusham Dharma is here for support. This you have to we have to understand this principle. And I remember one preacher in Croatia used to say that we often try just to salto mortale from a mode of passion to transcendence. It can go like this, but it doesn't happen very often. There's a gradual path. There's a gradual path of purification coming up and up, going like on the steps. It's very difficult just you have a, like an Empire State Building and jumping on top. You just go gradually, gradually, gradually. And this is where foundation or the social principles come in. But um, you're saying that some of this, that comment, the body from creation says that rarely someone goes from passion to transcendence. Mm. Could you give an example of that? That someone goes from passion to transcendence. Have you built a double mango taco? What what is that for you, friend? Well, you could say he was in passion going to see this prostitute and all of a sudden gave it up and became a completely But prostitute. still again in this context, he was a, he was Brahminical family and he had some background. He had but he fallen down. He has fallen down and you can see also uh, because of his previous scars, although he acted very sinfully. This previous star some had somehow had influence on him, and because of that, he became a devotee in a, in a way. Can you give an know, example? Someone that is coming from what of passion and transcendence? Actually, no. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they are, but I don't know any examples. What about Dhruva Maharaj? Was it passion? Yes. You have to you have to understand. Dhruva Maharaj was a uh, was a son of a king. That means best education. Uh, kings are usually taught best manners. So in a way, from our like, if we could, if we compare ourselves with Dhruva Maharaj, we 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 don't make on the same page. We, we cannot go there. Like. You always we need to take the context. His desire was wow. You can say to have 
not only the BMW or the Porsche or the, but just the whole world, everything. So his desire was very passionate. But him being passionate, it usually doesn't function like this. And usually, after you see, uh, this is what Vishnu Chakravati Thakur calls is uh, Utsaha Mai. Uh, it's false enthusiasm, meaning one day I'm, yeah, 25 rounds, Mangalarati, yeah. And then the next day, oh, so it's very difficult to keep up like this, so steadiness. And Prabhupada often said that uh, don't be surprised who leaves, but who stays. Because to be a devotee after 20, 30 years, that really shows something. That really shows something, that steadiness. And for this steadiness, sattva gun is necessary. Without sattva gun, you cannot have this. You cannot maintain, maintain for a long time. Raja gun pushes you, pushes you to be good for a certain while. Wow, then you burn out. You crash out. And I guess many of you know examples of people who really, OK, this progress is never lost. It's always there. That person is greatly benefited forever. It's never lost. But as a principle, you always is better develop some sattva gun. And this is what our sadhana is actually doing. We are forced to become sattvic. Whether we like it or not, we are forced to become sattvic. Sometimes we do it in a very passionate way, but <laughs> We are forced to become sattvic, rising early in the morning. That I remember when I was, uh, uh, I used to live in the temple. Like uh, when I joined, I, I was drafted into army. Then after army, I joined the temple. So I had a very, <laughs> I'm very fixed because that's uh, what I, what I did. And then when I come home, when I wanted to sleep longer, I just couldn't because <laughs> I was just set up like this. That I was set up like this. So that's what this does for you. You kind of pushes you in the sattvic mode. And, and then you can maintain, you can steadily progress. Rajagun is just, it's here now, and God knows what happens in the future. <coughs> Externally looks good, results are there, but crashes out. Thank you for very much, guys. Very exactly. So you said that we have to establish one ashram dharma mm -hmm. as a foundation in order to come to uh, the root top uh, of Prayer um, At the same time, I think it was Bhakti Nam uh, who mentioned that actually it is um, offensive to see Vaishnava as belonging to certain shudra or, or, or to certain um, caste. So how to reconcile this? And another thing is actually I find it very difficult to establish it because who would like to situate himself, you know, himself properly for the, for the shudra or as a... Uh, Ramananda Rai was a shudra. Yeah. And he, he was giving instructions to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, I think what we need to understand is, uh, like you said, the point is to consider somebody like he's from, I don't know, East Europe, he's from India, he's from Bengal, he's a better Vaishnava, he's a lower Vaishnava, only because of his material background, that's offensive, like you said, because he's a Brahminical, that's offensive. Because to be a Vaishnava is something more than being a member of Vaishnava, is the social system. So we have to understand that, uh, like, uh, Varna is like your shoe size. It's very good to know your shoe size, yeah? Yeah. If you're size 8 and you're constantly buying shoe size 7, you will have great difficulties walking. So it's good to not know what's your shoe size. If you have shoe, shoe, shoe 8, you buy shoes number 8, and you can walk peacefully. You can walk very nicely. But the main thing here is walking. Shoes are less important. Shoes just help you facilitate this, your walking. Shoes are important, but not ultimately important. In the same way, Varnashram Dharma. The main thing is uh, Krishna Seva. 
What's the purpose of uh, Vanarshan? To develop love from Daivi Vanarshan, to develop love of God. And Vanarshan Dharma is like a shoe size, just helps to facilitate this. And ultimately, <coughs> it's not so much important, but it's, it's very, very helpful. So you can say, Vaishnava with a uh, Brahminical nature, that's okay. 